Okay, boom, we're live. We've not. Uh, I'm replacing Josh today. Well, not replacing him. We've just kicked him off the podcast, so Josh is not here. But thank it's God, a, because it's a white belt. Yeah, <laughs> is that so? Today, yeah, we've got a special black belt only podcast. So Josh is only a one strike white belt, so we've banned him from the table. In my own studio. In his own studio, he's crying in corner now. So yeah, we've just done. A, we've just had a seminar. Um, so we're joined by Mr. Chris Houter, uh, head of the Combat Base association and then we've got darren and helen curry head of combat base in the uk um so first of all welcome thanks for coming Thank you. darren wants a nap he's he's past his bedtime so i want a nap too i'm knackered <laughs> jet you, lagged and knackered how, how are you finding the uh, time difference is that messing you up a little bit they always <laughs> do um but it's not bad honestly it's not bad yeah yeah cool so well, well the cold uh, is bad yeah yeah it's like Cryo, full-time cryo chamber. Yeah, I'm over at Adam's place, and he's, like, all has excited because he's got a cryo chamber, and I'm like, why don't you just remove your clothes, walk outside? <laughs> That's cryo. Colder. I know, we need, we need saunas, we need eating up over here. It's colder than a witch's tit in a brass <laughs> bra on the back of a Harley. <laughs> oh, <'cause. laughs> So, um... Let's get, we'll get started. We'll, we're just going to do a quick one today because Chris is busy. He's off to London, right? You got a seminar, off to London, seminar yes. in London. So, yep. um, Onuma's place. Yeah, and then where whereabouts are you heading after that? Are you You're to Ireland? Ireland, yeah. Yep. And then are you some out? of the straight blast gyms. I'll be there. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. Because uh, for those watching, obviously, from everybody knows who McGregor is now, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the SBG connection with Combat Base is that like. Uh, <laughs> Matt Thornton. <laughs> yep. He, he runs S B G and I'm his coach, his black belt or. So you are Conor McGregor's grandmaster, basically. But Conor's great grand coach. There you go. Because that would go me, Matt Thornton, John Kavanaugh, <coughs> Conor McGregor. Yeah. There you go. So he the, came to your guys one time, didn't he? I think we're Yeah, he came to my garage at one time. Yeah. On YouTube. Yep. I like Conor. He's a good guy. Yeah, so there is there is roots, and I, I think I remember when I first started training with, with you guys in Ponte, you had like all SBG patches and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, through through Chris, we um, we met Matt Thornton at a time like with the SBG like in the early days, didn't we? We did. It was um, some good times actually. Still, you know, really really glad that we kind of hooked up with those guys when we mm -hmm. did. Yeah. So so like rewinding to that back back to the back to the start basically. Um, so Helen was one of the first. She was the first female. I think Helen is the first female UK black belt. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Or Europe? Or second in second Europe. Second in, second in Europe, Europe, but first in the second UK. Second in Europe. French girl. So was French girl. Yes. She got it a month a month before I got. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now like Helen is out. tougher than nails, though. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. It was it's that Celtic blood. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's that fucking you see, Celtic we don't mind blood. the cold, Chris. We don't whinge about the cold. You don't. You know what I mean? It's and I'll tell you, I go like all over the place, like places where it's snowing and all that. But th th in inside, it's warm. Whereas UK, you can never find warmth. <laughs> Only under hot water. And sometimes I'm in places where the water doesn't even get hot. <laughs> and it's like, geez. You guys just love the cold. We have central heat in our gym. You do? Yeah. We do, yeah. Why don't you use it? We do. <laughs> cost money. Cost money. <laughs> we just like to have it there, not, not turn yeah, it yeah, on. We don't. Yeah, it is. In the summer, we've got a big fan, but we don't put that on either. It's like torture. Jiu Jitsu like... should be torture. Yes, but warm torture. No, man, no. So, so I, when I started training with you guys, like I say, you had SBG patches and stuff like that. Yeah. I can't even remember what year that was. Like it, um, mid two thousands, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I maybe, don't know. Maybe a touch earlier. Yeah. So, um, I'm not quite sure. I, I I remember I was at the pro MMA fight you had, which was one or two fights before UFC. Yeah. Yeah, you, well, that was, that was my debut on it. Me, me, well, uh, my pro debut, I think you was there. The, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we yeah. both cornered you. Yeah. yeah, when I leg lock that guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because I remember you saying to me, I'm, I'm going to get a leg lock, I'm going to get a leg lock. And I see you just standing Now everybody's doing fucking leg locks. Yeah, because of you. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember yeah. seeing you step, standing over the guy and throwing some shots, and I'm thinking, don't sit back for a leg lock, yeah. don't sit back for a leg lock. 
And then Chris shouted as well, don't, don't do it. And then Danny <laughs> did it and he got it. So, <laughs> so what do we know? We should let, the, let the guy do what he does. Uh, yeah, uh, let them do what they do. Could have all gone wrong. He could have come on top, beat the shit out of me, <laughs> and we wouldn't be sat here now. I'd just, I'd have quit. And yeah. then prob- I'd probably be like a plumber or something now instead. That'd be awesome. You'd be somewhere I'd be in installing I'd be central eating and in gyms. That's what I'd be doing. <laughs> 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 that they don't use. Oh, there's a need for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, <laughs> it's just for show, though. Yeah, the central heating is just for show, Chris. <laughs> just for when you come over. <laughs> so when I started, I think was you a blue belt or a yeah. purple belt at that time? Blue belt, blue maybe. Belt, I, think, yeah. I, I think when I started, I think you just got your purple belt. Yeah, around that I time, you just got this purple belt. Yeah. Um, when would that have been? We got blue belts in 2000, January 2000. I think I was maybe five years at blue belt. Yeah. And you got your purple belt with Matt, right? No, you. Was it me? Or <laughs> Thanks, coach. <laughs> no, uh, mem- memorable. Can't, right? can't you remember that check? Can't you remember that check that you had yeah, to hand yeah, over? Yeah, yeah. You, you took the money. No one, no one remembers <laughs> the, when you gave them the lower belts, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so so if that's like mid two thousand, that's kind of when I yeah, started training. Like that, yeah. yeah. And yeah. D- did you get promoted before Darren, Helen? I did. Yeah, there you go. I did. Always, always one in front. Yeah. In life and in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because people have said about you know um, about about being the best guy in the group, and I go, I'm I'm t- never been the best guy in the group. I've never been the best guy in the gym. I've never even been the best guy in our house. <laughs> you know, so, so so when you get someone like Helen there, your egos pretty much kicked out of you right right from the start. I didn't know how to do it on a purpose, you know, just to sort of keep me in check. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like obviously Darren's a better of the two, but I'll give the I'll give the belt first to Helen, you know, just to keep keep him reined in a little bit. It's a good tactic. <laughs> it worked. So when did so obviously, you know, you guys started Jiu Jitsu. When did you start actually training in Jiu Jitsu? Um basically just do it yourself. Grappling and stuff pretty much from the first First couple of UFCs, wasn't yeah. it, really? So, like, it it, like 93, 94. So, yeah. It was the first, second UFC that we yeah. got into, it, wasn't it? I think so. When we watched yeah. um, Gracie, Ho- Hoist Gracie yeah. against um, Pat Smith, was it? Yeah, yeah, Pat Smith, the kickboxer. Yeah, the kickboxer. You see, I remember that. Like, I think it was 97 or 98. Yeah. When and that, I, that's when it kind of, we thought. And, yeah, and, and, and I'd rolled with um, guys in London, mostly... A G- a kundo guys, I rolled with some a judo guys, and you guys were the first I'd rolled them with who were actually aware of uh, what a guard was and what a triangle was and all that stuff, and I was impressed. I yeah, because like, we met you in Hull yeah, yeah. through Andy Norman. And I was asking, like, where'd you guys learn yeah. your jiu-jitsu? Yeah. But, but it was because just, no one else knew anything then. It, it, but we were just Who I'd experienced, yeah. From... Tapes and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was no internet then, was there? No, no YouTube. So, so, so at that point, Chris, when the UFC comes around, what are you like a purple belt at this point? Like when UFC this... one happened, I was a, a purple belt. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Th- I'm guessing there's nobody in the gym until that day, and then the gym starts filling up with guys <laughs> yeah. wanting to learn. I mean, as an American, I was lucky because I was in LA, which is the martial arts. Mecca of the world, which is where people would go to to either make it in the movies or make it in just martial arts. It was, you know, everyone from Chuck Norris, Bruce Lee, everybody comes to L.A. So you, you trained with in the olden days, right? Like Chuck Norris did jiu-jitsu and stuff. He trained. He, he did. Yep. With the Machado. Um, you armed him, didn't you? I've spar- yeah, I did. I've arm barred Chuck Norris. Yep. Nah. I tapped out. That, Chuck that, that, no, you, that, that didn't happen. No, that's my he claim made, He thing. made you think that you tapped him. When Chuck is... Yeah, everyone <laughs> thinks... But Chuck is tough. He, he actually is tough. I mean, he's... um, He has amazingly, like, big hands and strong arms. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, he, he, uh, even then, I mean, he's 10, 15 years older than me. And it was, it was for... I was a brown belt, and it was for his blue belt. A test, yeah, that I was rolling. <laughs> him and I rolled. Yeah, what were he like? Su- were he super famous at that point? Like, did everybody know? Oh, everyone who- knew who yeah. Chuck Norris was. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. 
Because I guess he's in the films in like the 80s, yes, right? Yes, yeah, so, in the yeah. 80s. Yeah, I loved his movies. Yeah. I loved The Octagon. Uh, that was one of my favorite movies as a kid. You know, uh, with ninjas. And I loved ninjas because it was so like cool and spies and black uniforms and black masks. And yeah, I loved all that shit. Film that you, that been crazy it's now. too bad, yeah. It's yeah. too bad. It That's a th- YouTube clip of you and Byron Chuck Norris. Yeah, there, there is a YouTube video of Chuck and I think it's Jean Jacques mm-hmm. doing like a demo yeah. back yeah. in like the nineties. Yeah, yeah. It's it, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah really good. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's mad to think, you know, because everyone thinks of him as this this film yeah, this film yeah. guy, but he actually. Well, Chuck was yeah. He, he was a very skilled athlete. Yeah, you know? he, and he was. Even now he does, because um, he's got his own Taekwondo association. Yeah. And even now he does, I think two days out of every year, he does like jujitsu. He makes all his black belts. They yep. have to do jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's still, uh, yeah, he's still involved with that. Twice a year, that's, he's trained more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but jujitsu has certainly changed the martial arts world, right? Hit it like a, like a punch in the nose. Yeah, I think you say that was one of the worst days ever. I've seen Hoyt Gracie win first UFC. The best of, and the worst, right? Because then everybody wanted everybody to know wants jiu-jitsu. To know well, it's like I knew the cat your, was out of the bag, right? Yeah, it's, it's, took away your like, superpower, yeah, right? It's, it's yeah. like now everyone will acquire it, right? Which I thought would happen faster, but it did happen, right? And um, it's it's always still amazing, but to me, the a persistence of fake martial arts disguising themselves as reality martial arts. In other words, like I'm not surprised that cultural martial arts, such as various Kung Fu styles with their beautiful acrobatics are around still because like ballet, it's, it's still a, it's like an art form. It's a beautiful art form. But I'm I'm shocked that, that there's still the you know Joe's self the defense school that like shows you know weird stuff that or the streets that kind of MMA UFC in the, in the early days ha- has sort of like proven that no that's kind of won't work yeah I, th- I think there became a point where you could either accept that this MMA stuff is reality and then just give what you say you've done fucking Kempo or something for 20 years. You've got to sit down and think, right, that 20 years I've kind of that's wasted the thing. Are time. you going to throw it away? Or are you going to yes. dive deeper? Mm-hmm. Or you can ignore MMA and go deeper into yes. this fucking shit and start. Um, yeah. I think there's kind of three paths in general. Right. And <coughs> one of them is like, you're, you had a classical style, say, or even one of the other combat sports. You did boxing, you did wrestling, and you discover the jiu-jitsu. You, you throw it all out and start brand new and say, I'm going to learn the jiu-jitsu. And then maybe later on you bring back some of the things you learned. That's one route. The other route is the threat to your ego and all that you've already learned, you reject it. And in essence, you decide that you are going to figure out how to beat the jujitsu. And then there's the middle route that a lot of guys will take where they'll keep up their Kung Fu or karate while in parallel learning the jujitsu and then one day, whether it's in months or years, they realize that they hardly do their other stuff anymore at all, and all they would do now is jujitsu. That's usually when they're a purple belt or a brown belt, and then they get their well, black belt, and they chip off the kung fu shingle on their school, and they hang up the Brazilian but jiu-jitsu one, right? And <laughs> it's usually one of those routes, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Or some kind of blend in between those three routes. Though. Yeah, because we're seeing a lot of, like, self-defense stuff now, like crazy. Um, it's like Andy Norman, the guy who actually, he brought yeah. you here and did, yes. you know, originally you were saying in Hull, that's oh, where you yeah, first 
met Chris, that, that's kind of what he's doing now. But he's been exposed to, to you and jiu-jitsu and stuff, but he's really gone into this self-defense. It's like a hole that you can't get out of. I yeah. think once you start going too deep into self-defense. Yes. And you know, uh, I also think, and it, I, I believe that th this is the same with everything in life, including politics, is it's easier to sell fear and a simple solution to a complex problem. Because reality martial arts is complex and hard work. And I think it's easier if you can come up with like some three move answer that will solve the problem of you being attacked. So it becomes a cerebral exercise more than an actual body exercise almost. And so I think that that attraction to a simple answer is comforting more so than the can of worms that reality arts are. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like... What, you say like you after your first jujitsu class, you're like, "Wow, this is great," and if but presented in a way that you want to get your hooks in your students, you show them you know here's a guy who attacks you like he puts a headlock on you or he grabs you around the waist or he grabs your um, um wrist and you. You instruct class one a series of moves where you gain a control, choke them, or a joint unlock them. You, you can walk out of that class thinking, wow, I actually like learned such a move that, that I can apply right now. And then you come back the next class and you start realizing, oh, I don't really know it. And then like within a few months, you realize, wow, I barely have even scratched what it is and against a guy who knows or even just, you, you know, some spazzy athlete all get destroyed. So it starts opening up the can of worms that you chase the art then, right? Yeah. And you can chase the art or you can chase the illusion of self a defense and I think that's where that little switching occurs whether yeah. whether you love the competition win lose or draw you like the fight you like the art or your ego says I don't want to risk losing so I'm gonna teach self a defense and just stop at that point where I show one to three things and then keep that illusion of, of it works. Yeah. Because I think the, the thing with the combat sports, I will say, as opposed to combat arts, is once you get involved in the sport, and that depending on the, the combat the sport rules, right, then you really start to love the game I think right yeah it's like you, you speak about it about like um, you know you, you think about the street you know you train in the sport side you know you learn about the art but you just appears to be that's what's real is, is we gotta learn how to street fight right um, it's like I always I, I firmly believe that if you took a a combat athlete, you could run them through a weekend course on street applicable self defense moves. And in that weekend course, the experienced become a bad athlete will acquire those skills. But if you have a guy who's been doing years of street self the the defense you can't put him through through a weekend course of combat sports and have him uh, compete against other yeah combat athletes yeah definitely. it's just it, it it it's it's 
beyond cerebral. It, it gets down into the bones and meat of of reaction and timing and experience against real resistance and against the, uh, your peers and and that's irreplaceable. Do you remember that guy who came train with us one time? He um, he was a self defense instructor, and he didn't even get through your warm up. <laughs> Did he? So I think you're right in saying. Not many that. people do get through Ellen's well, warm ups, do they? A fairly simple warm up that day, though. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, he, I remember that. He actually um, and he he kind of quit there and then. Uh, it's you know, even finished warming up, he just got his bag and went. And uh, this, this was the guy. This was the f- self defense instructor. It's kind of where everyone starts, isn't it? We, yeah. Most people start out doing martial arts because they want to defend themselves yeah. yep. against bullies or yes. guys push them around. So you, most and people, and it's mostly an imagined scary guy, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's like it starts. It's, it's it starts from a fear, and for a lot of us, it's it's reminiscent the childhood fear, whether we were truly picked on or not. Or w- whether, like, f- for me, I was a stuttering, but defiant, I don't want to take shit f- from anyone, a kid who liked uh, to fight. So, so I liked that whole part of it. But you were always scared because you always knew there was guys out there who were tougher. So you, you, you're chasing, in essence, and the street fight in civilized Western world really is a sport too. It's unlicensed boxing, whether it's a, a, a schoolyard brawl or a brawl in the pub. It's a sport. There's kind of established cultural rules. And so really you're already blurring the line of a sport and street. In that way, yeah, right? Yeah. But if you're the guy who's never been in a physical altercation in your life, I think it's far easier to be sucked into the fake self-defense martial art a paradigm. Yeah, you're looking for this magical answer that'll just yeah. beat anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think looking back to that, you mentioned Chuck Norris earlier, that kind of sort of that, that fantasy film where one guy gets attacked by like 10 guys and he just wipes them all out. Yeah, that's yeah. all of our dream, right? Yeah. <laughs> Doing spinning back kicks, just uh, tagging yeah. guys in the head, no problem. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, I've trained martial arts all my life and I've had quite a few scrapes on the street and it's fucking chaos. Yeah. Yeah. It's so messy. It's it's street yeah, fighting is messy. It's way messy. You can't, yeah. you can't really, tra- you can't really yeah. replicate. And the mat is not soft. Yeah, it's just fucking... And there's obstacles everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Holes, fire hydrants, st- <laughs> stone walls, cars, traffic, curbs, other humans. Strangers. <laughs> yeah, there is a Doncaster. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's It's crazy crazy so going back to like obviously used to you say you met chris in hull yeah so what how did how did this kind of thing start you know with the old combat base thing Hull is the paradise of the uk i, f- I disagree <laughs> mate i have to disagree <laughs> i disagreed earlier as well with how, when he said about everybody goes to la to get into to martial arts and films and that but i think people go to hull i think it's hull, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's what hull really the thought. epicenter <laughs> Yeah, we just um, out of the blue got got an invitation from Andy Norman to go and meet this guy, and we pretty much hit it off. So right just away. like a sem- just a seminar, right? Yeah, just and then, start with you. Um, yeah, it was in a church hall in the middle of a little village that we'd never even heard of, and we all crammed into this church hall, and there must have been about fifty people there, and there was Chris and Chance came over, and. We just got training, got talking to Chris and Chance at the end and everything, and then it went from there, didn't it? Yeah. Yep. But Chance is now one of my uh, black belts who instructs in s- Singapore. Mm. He's got a little group he runs out there. Yeah, that's cool. You've been been all over the world coaching and stuff. Are you are you heading after Ireland? Are you heading like into Europe? Are you got some seminars? Uh, no, no, after Ireland, I'm headed home. All right. So. Mm-hmm. You, you, you do a lot of seminars out in Europe as well, Scandinavia and stuff. I usually do two to three overseas a year. 
Yep. Uh, Europe and or UK, Ireland, um, Australia. He hooked up with the Globetrotters guys. The Globetrotters, yep, yeah, yeah. I do those uh, camps occasionally. I. Where, where's your favorite place that you've been? You know, I like everywhere I go. Even if it's a place that I would never want to live, I love the experience of going, right? Um, so, yeah, I like everywhere. I don't have any place I would say that's, oh, that's my favorite place. Hull. I got to go there. Hull. Hull. We, need yeah. to get, we need to get back to Hull. Of course, Hull. <laughs> yeah. To Hull and back. Hull is just great. You know, I, you don't need a heater in Hull, right? <laughs> We had a good crack in South Africa doing no similar. Oh, so yeah, God. That was fun. I'm warm. That night was At least it was die. warm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never been to South Africa. Yeah, it, it was pretty awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah it's, it's, the guy um, like the guy in the family, the family that we stayed with, were like, real, like, kind of um, Christians, weren't they? Real, kind of like. They're, they're very religious, yeah. religious people. And so, uh, First night we were there, I, I volunteered how to say grace to them before they ate. <laughs> do, you, do, you remember your, do you remember your grace that you came up with? What did I say? God's neat, let's eat. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God, that's horrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I... I. Oh, and then, and then when I went back into our room, and I and they're playing um, NWA to the guy's kids. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, listen to this music. <laughs> I was like, Chris, you can't be doing that with these kids. Oh, like, I'm oh, playing that's cool, you know. Yeah. All, the, all the kids in LA like them. It's like, you know, we're not in LA, mate. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'll, I'll steer away from anything that involves me making a comments on religion, politics, <coughs> race, and culture because... We'll be here all night. Yeah, yeah we don't have yeah. time. Yeah. We're, Even we'll know that that is my favorite thing to talk <laughs> about. <laughs> we'll save that for another day. I we'll just, love philosophy. Yeah, we'll just do a, a quick one today. <laughs> but yeah, so... A I'll, ask Helen stuff and Darren stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so obviously start, at that point when you met Chris, you white belts at that point. Yeah. And then... Um, yeah, so you so you linked up, and then what happened? Then were you getting him back every year, or like how often are you are you training with him at that oh, point? Bring him. He was coming over yeah, twice. Was coming twi over. I but came over twice, twice sometimes, a year, twice, twice a year, a year. Yeah. for about five years, yeah. huh? And yeah. then when because obviously my brother lives in LA, so we'd go over to stay with my brother, and we'd go over and train with Chris over in Redondo and stuff like that. So, and that's just how we. Then formed like combat base and with jujitsu. It, it, ju yep. it was yeah. you guys that came up. I remember for years, I never know what to call my jujitsu, right? And I never wanted to, to, the, the Chris Howder uh, jujitsu. I always thought that just seemed to, um, see, really, I've always thought I've got this weird love hate with martial arts as a whole. <laughs> It, it it seems corny, like running around and learning how to fight. It seems so, and a lot like and again, it's it's a love hate, right? There's this also aspect to me that totally embraces it and loves it and loves the art and and sees the value in the primal learning of it. But then there's this other part that, you know, it's like could be quantified as the classic, you know, self-defense instructor, you know. I'm going to teach you how to be tough. We're going to learn this. You know, it's, yeah. You're supposed to grow out of that. And I never yeah, did. You, you came up with the position combat base. Yes. And that's where we took the name from. So, yes. so that, that I named it. Yes. yes. So that's, that's from like a, that's like a military term, right? The combat base is that. I, what I don't. It, it's, it's not the, even really a military term, but is, is I thought of it. Yes, as, yeah. as a. It's a good position for the passing guard, the transitioning from the, the being down into standing. You can shoot from there. Mm -hmm. You can punch from there. You can but defend from there. So it's a base from in which. 
it's so a combat base. Yeah. So you did. So you came up with that name I for came that up position. With that term, and then they, Helen and but Darren were like, call it the combat base, but jujitsu. And, and at first, of course, I hated it be, because I always hate any named thing. At first, <laughs> it just seems, oh, really? We're gonna name it? Um, then uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. So you, the gym was called Combat Base first, right? And yeah. then, uh, and then, yeah. Now, now the old branch, and we've got. There's quite a few schools now. I mean, obviously, we've got schools in the UK, but in in America is the there's quite affiliates. A few, yeah, yeah. Few, yeah. I mean, had I had any brains and less morals, I would have created a pyramid structure where everybody who was under me had to change the name of their school to combat base. And then we would have a, a, a big team, a big tribe. Matching geese. Yeah. Matching geese well, and all that really. stuff. Yeah. But, but I always approach this thing as let adults be adults and have independence, especially if they're paying you. And I always find it weird that adults pay other adults to control them. Yeah. It seems, and that that's the culty part about martial arts, is about how you're paying somebody money, yet they're telling you what you can wear, what patch you can have, what shirt, and you're paying them money. It it's, it's, seems like a pyramid scheme or a cult. And... And that's like just one of those kind of strange things that, and that would never work in jujitsu. Yeah, I'm not saying <laughs> no, yeah, that, that would never work. Yeah, yeah we could get we could get like red patches. But and no. maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. Maybe that is just human nature. But you, you, that that's just our the, the way we yield. Yeah. And including me, I'm not claiming I'm somehow never involved in the being sucked into that thing because i think it's it's in our genes i think that's what yeah and it's, and it's religion a, is yeah it's a business you've got you, to make money you as pay well. to be told what to do in, in lots of logos for like jiu-jitsu clubs it's there for you to see it looks like a triangle on the logo <laughs> if you look closer it's actually a pyramid it's a pyramid yes. it's a scheme man it tells you <laughs> an illuminati shit or something yeah. like that but, but i think that that's what's good about combat base because i like i Basically trained in a garage. I've trained with lots of different coaches. I'm from Doncaster, where there's lots of there's lots of black belts. You know, from back in the day, we're training. But I, I started training at Pontefract, and then Chris actually gave me my blue belt. Um, I can't remember what year that was. I have put it on BJJ belt checker though. I've done. I've made my little <laughs> profile with all my dates on. Oh, nice. But yeah. Um, so yeah. 2000 and would you been, something. Would you like seven, 17, 18, I think I was 17 or 18, yeah, when yeah. I got that. I, I was pretty young. But yeah, so. And then I've stayed with Combat Base this entire time, you know. I've, and, but the cool thing about it is, is that kind of independence and freedom. Like, I can do what I want pretty much. And, you know, that, I think that's what attract people to join Combat Base is, is that freedom. Yeah. Whereas. Yeah. You know, so it, it's just a you good... You don't make any fucking money doing that, though. Yeah, it's a good alternative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's eat. Let's eat. <laughs> or yeah. I'm going to go pee. You guys wrap this podcast up. <laughs> I got to... Sweet. This is more than a pregnant lady. We got to get out of here anyway. Oh, way to end it. Also, oh, yeah. business matters are sponsors too, don't they? Oh, yeah, don't oh, worry yeah. about that. Boy, outer has left the building. <laughs> So, yeah, we have actually got a shoe. Um, so, yeah, thanks to Amazing Green CBD. Check them out. Use code AVT10 for discounts. Um, and if anybody wants to train uh, at Combat Base, where can they find you? Where do, where do they do they just turn up at your house? It's, um, it's a secret location. They have to actually find us to qualify to actually train. There you go. <laughs> so, um, either that or Google. <laughs> Combat base Pontefract. Uh, Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Helen. Thank Thanks, you. Chris, who's now in the toilet. Oh, God. And uh, anyone wants to sponsor us, get in touch. Ah, uh, yeah. So, so we are still looking for some new sponsors and stuff. If you want to jump on, uh, just fire us a message. Uh, you can get in touch with me, Danny Mitchell MMA, on all social media, and Josh Goodgen. Or yeah, All Stars Podcast. 
Thanks for today. Thank you. Thanks, Thank mate. you. Cheers.